Hi folks, we've got another Clean Water Systems instructional video for you today. Uh, we're going to go over uh, replacing your seal kit in your 5900 series air valve. Uh, this is something that we recommend you do on a yearly basis. Uh, if you decide not to and wait till your valve actually fails, uh, you may end up having to purchase a lot more parts. Um, the damage to the piston can occur, so you really want to make sure you do this on a yearly basis. So, um, if your valve is a year old, uh, we did send you an extra seal and spacer kit uh, with your valve. Uh, looks like this. So you'll need that, and if you don't have any of those available, uh, you'll go ahead and go online and you can order some from us. Um, also, you're going to need some silicon-based lubricant for the seals, to lubricate the seals. And either a screwdriver or a quarter inch and five sixteenths nut driver uh, will complete this job. The nice thing about these valves is you can do this without removing the head from the from the tank. Um, they were designed that way, really great design. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove the dust cover. Pop that guy off. And we're going to go ahead and put our bypass valve into the bypass mode. Basically you have water in, coming in, water going out, so you still have water to the home. We're just going to isolate the tank uh, from that while we're doing our service. So you still have water in the house. It just won't be treated water. So the first thing we want to do is relieve the pressure off the tank. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and force it into a backwash mode. Again, we are isolated from the house now. So we'll go ahead, push the set change button, push it one more time and hold it. And what we're going to do is go into sequence two. That's one that's the air release. We'll go ahead and push it again and advance to sequence two. You can see the twos flashing as soon as the valve stops orienting. Okay, so we're at sequence two right now in the backwash mode. You should have seen water come out this uh, hose, so your pressure should all be vented at this point in time. So what we want to do now is go ahead and cut the power off to the unit. And also uh, a yearly maintenance. Let's go ahead and pull the battery out as well. It's a good time to replace that, your backup battery. Um, and plus you don't want the valve uh, going into servicing, service mode uh, as you're doing your assembly or your rebuild of it. So go ahead and take your battery out. So now normally you could just do this here for the video purposes. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect here at the bypass valve. Again, you still have water going through this valve into your house. You just don't have any going into the head. And you can also disconnect your drain line. It's that little blue clip here. It just pops out, seals with the O-ring. So go ahead and do that. And like I said, you could do this rebuild here just for room and for video purposes. I'm going to go ahead and spin the tank around. First uh, screw we're going to remove. There's only a total of eight screws to remove for this rebuild, so it's really not that difficult. First one we're going to remove is uh, the screw that connects. The, it's the guide piston for the piston going up and down on the cam here. It's got a large area washer. It's a quarter inch nut driver, so we'll go ahead and back that out. And we're going to go ahead and remove this rear shelf. There's two black screws, one here and one here. We'll go ahead and remove those that are the same size uh, quarter inch. Move this little shelf that's on there. Okay, now we'll switch over to our 5 sixteenths nut driver. Again, you can use a regular screwdriver on these. I just prefer to use a nut driver. We're going to remove these two screws right here. This will allow us to actually remove the power head from the valve body. So it's just these two outer ones right now. And you want to be careful as you're pulling this cam out of here. Take a good visual picture of this or even a snap one with your cell phone just so you understand how it goes back together. But basically this will just slide forward and pop right out like that. Now, 
you can leave this supported down here I wouldn't hang it too much from the wire um, if you did want to there's clips on the side here you can actually remove the plate and then you can actually go in here and unplug this cable and run it back through um, it's kind of a hassle to run the wires back through the valve body so um, I would just try to find support there get yourself a little stand or somehow and support that okay now we've got the three screws here we're going to take the top of the piston off and as you pull this up some of the seals and spacers may come with the piston uh, they are as you can see so go ahead and bring that all up so basically this is a new valve so this piston looks really good it's, it's nice and new so when you're inspecting your piston, normally they would look something like this. There's going to be some discoloration. You want to make sure there's no real deep scratches in here. This is actually, these flats right here are actually where the uh, seals seat to change the valve position for the valve to work. So if there's scratches in here, you're, it's going to leak. It's going to allow you to bypass water. This one probably, if you can scrape your fingernail across it and you can't feel it, you're probably okay. Uh, this is one where a customer didn't service their valve for several years and as you can see the gouges are really deep here this piston assembly is going to need to be replaced now so again it's important to do this maintenance uh, yearly so for your piston just go ahead and clean it up real well inspect it for this part of it what you're going to want to do is pull all the seals and spacers out there are four spacers and five seals And there's one spacer at the bottom, the bottom spacer, that is different than all the other spacers. So the spacers you got in your kit are flat. And basically the seals go in between each one of them. So you go spacer, spacer, seal, spacer, seal. The bottom spacer, as you can see, has a couple of little tangs sticking out of it. This needs to be indexed inside the valve correctly. And basically these two tangs face the front of the valve and when you drop it down in there you want to take your fingers and make sure that it's locked into place and it can't spin if you tighten this down and break these off your valve will not work so what you're going to want to do now is you're going to want to get in here and clean this up really well wipe any uh, kind of iron residue or if maybe you got some of the media when you were doing a, a aggressive backwash got media up in there get that all cleaned out you got your vent line off here too so you can kind of flush water down through here and, and get rags and q-tips whatever you can use to get out, get that all cleaned out so I do have a valve body here and I wanted to show you the front of the valve there's two little holes in here and these little tangs need to line up with those little you can see the little um, let's see if I can get up close enough there yeah see the little tangs here on this guy right here these two sticking out need to line up back in up into here where these are so right up into into this area so make sure that bottom seal gets up in there and again that's facing the front of the valve is where that ends up clocking in now what you want to do is go ahead and get this boat once you get everything cleaned out get this bottom seal in there and again make sure you clock it correctly your valve will not work if you smash those down and you can kind of feel it like I said I spin it until I can feel it lock in and then I know it's locked in I can't spin it so I've got it locked in there then what you want to do is go ahead take your lube and go ahead and put a little lube on the inside of all of these seals just get a little dab on there and run it around with your finger get a nice seal on there doesn't need to be out here just on the inside there where the piston goes back and forth so once your bottom seats in you want to put in a, a seal then the spacer then a seal make sure you lube all these uh, seals up good I pre lubed all of these before I started then a seal Spacer, another seal, 
spacer, and then the last seal. This is going to seal the top of the valve to the body. Now, as you can see here, there is about, you, you take note of this kind of depth here, because the piston assembly here, this part of it seats down onto it. And what you want to make sure is if that thing, that bottom seat's not oriented correctly, it's going to be up high. And as you tighten this down, you're going to break it. So you got to kind of make sure it all looks like it's going to snug up. Again, wipe, clean up your piston. If your piston's badly damaged, uh, we do sell these uh, new assemblies. You can order one of these from us. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to slide this piston down. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put our three screws that hold the piston assembly down into the valve body. It's these three here. And what you're going to want to do is kind of snug those back and forth and kind of tighten them up in a little crisscross pattern so you don't bind that piston up in there. Okay, and then what I always do is I pull the piston up and down just to kind of make sure it's moving freely like that. And then we're going to go ahead put our power head back on and again just kind of watch your uh, valve there and you're going to want to lift this piston up to match the little cam so it's going to fit in like that. And then we'll go ahead and put our two screws in that hold the power head down to the base. It is important to note here on this uh, yoke that there's a thicker side to this side of the valve. There's a little plastic piece right here that won't allow it to go that way so you want to make sure you have that it oriented correctly. Now we'll go ahead and put this screw back in. We'll go ahead and put our little black shelf back on. That just kind of snaps in there. Great, and that's all there is, the eight screws. So we'll go ahead and flip the tank back around and reinstall our bypass valve. Again, these guys just need to be hand tightened. The O-rings seal them through the ceiling. And we're gonna go ahead and put our drain line back in. So we're gonna go ahead and put our power button back in. And as you can see, it'll come up and we're still in the backwash mode. That's fine. Let's go ahead and um, bring our bypass valve back out. We'll open that back up. And right now you'll actually be backwashing your system. You'll see water starting to come out. So you want to open these up slowly. Start backwashing the system. Then what you want to do is this: go ahead and press the set change button again. And just kind of walk through all of your sequences, wait a couple minutes in between them, make sure you don't have any leaks coming out anywhere up through here. You want to check up on top of the piston here in the back of the valve, make sure you don't have any water leaks through there. And then we'll just go on around to the air replenish and there again we're just going into the manual backwash uh, modes, press and hold it'll go to the next one. Now we're going into five into rapid rinse. So now you'll be flushing water through here, out through the drain. It'll be going down through the media, up through the D-tube. And then rinse that for a minute, and then go ahead and press the button one more time. And you'll end up back into service mode. And we're back into service mode. It'll just go back and forth between the time and the days left between regeneration. And like I said, since this is your yearly maintenance, now is a good time to go ahead and pop you a new backup battery in there like that. We'll reinstall the dust cover. And that's all there is to it, folks. That's how you uh, replace the seal and stem kit in your uh, 5900 series valve. Okay, have a great day.